Ok. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. So it was like challenging to discuss this paper uh, because I have a previous draft which is completely <laughs> which is completely different from the slides and the, um, the sample is doubled there just okay and uh, a bunch of robustness tests and the most important thing is institutional investor the channel it's like wonderful so why why should we care is the first question and we talk about the uh, probably the hottest the fattest the fastest growing sector of finance in wall street and you can grow your money and save the planet sorry a big trend etc etc trillions of dollars so it's important yes and i also hope that the concept the concept is sustainable as well given that these two hold you can grow your money and you can save the planet if this hold i hope this concept is okay so what the problem the problem is possible greenwashing right so it's not a new term greenwashing it's not a new strategy either and even Elon Musk a couple of months before right <laughs> is this outer scam right we did so here we uh, uh, at the age of scientific evidence okay different differentiation from the tweets okay here we have the scientific evidence uh, in this paper actually uh, at the edge to pinpoint this greenwashing effect and uh, uh, I see I clean up the picture a little <laughs> okay so there is something very nice about the cle clearness of the setting this figure brings out probably in the most elegant way the greenwashing effect and actually I call it greenwashing smile <coughs> kind of a smile <laughs> greenwashing smile so it's it's the pitch of this paper <laughs> Okay, um, there is some competition. It's good. It's good topic, right? There's some papers. Specifically, I would uh, uh, I would cite maybe this paper, the Coley, uh, 2022, Walk the Talk, and Dumitrescu, nice paper from Barcelona, right? 2022, um, defining greenwashing. So it's good. Okay. So this paper is the first paper defining greenwashing smile, right? Uh, Moreover, it shows that uh, fund families strategically transfer votes in addition to performance investments. They strategically transfer votes across uh, member funds to increase overall family profits and contribution uh, to mutual fund voting in general and especially on environment and social uh, votes issues, in particular in contested proposals. And uh, this paper, actually, uh, this uh, hand collected data set is very nice. It would be a very, very fruitful soil for the future research. Okay, so this is actually the main result. And before we um, dive in my questions, and I actually have only two questions classifications, is fund and non is fund, and contested proposal and not contested proposal. Okay, so first of all, I, I love this smile, okay? However, I'm not sure that these are lines, these bars are lines. Okay, sorry, okay? Because you have actually here voting outcome, okay? In ranges from 20 to, from 10 to 20, for example, okay? From 10, 10 to 20, and you have this group average support of 40%. Okay? It looks very, un, you know what, un, un, unlikely that you have this, for example, you have this, for, for this range, 20 to 30, you have the uh, group average outcome. It looks like a, a, a straight line. I'm not sure here. You have the here the average support, 30, 38%. Here 35 percent is very nice. But what is the average support here? I'm not sure that you have data. It's bars actually, right? It's not lines. Okay, that's a question. I don't know. So it's a line, so it's aggregated over the different intervals. So but you have you have for example okay. 
Um, it's not continuous. It's not continuous. I'm not sure this is continuous. No, I mean, because okay. we have every single volcano. Uh, okay, so, 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 so I think if it's not continuous, it looks like suspiciously straight line. So I'm not sure if you have in between the observations. Okay? Uh, so my, my first point is fund classification. Is fund or non is fund is actually a critical issue here. And uh, uh, your classification, you actually uh, uh, fund whose name contains an is related string, and you need all the prospectus. I have in a paper all the prospectus of, of this is funds. However, it would be nice to see if this variable, ES and non-ES, actually changes over time for the same fund. It's possible, right? And we know from Cooper, Golem, and Rao from 2005, we know that uh, mutual funds actually chasing, chasing styles, okay? So uh, environment and social issues doubles the style. So it will be interesting to see if funds switching out of the sample period from non-S to S uh, or in the reverse. Okay? Uh, if you read all of the prospects of S funds, it would be nice to see, maybe uh, randomly, to read some prospects of non-S funds. Because as Financial Times uh, argues uh, almost a year ago, Nowadays, every second fund is claiming it's in some way sustainable, okay? And we can, we can see here yeah, a boom of mutual funds in the United States, in Indonesia, in Europe, in Asia, probably in Japan and Korea as well, okay? Uh, my, my second issue is a proposal classification, okay? Contested proposal or not contested proposal, and even before that, I would like to, to see how many relevant proposals do we have in each sale of this family ideology when fund goes. Okay? Why well, I actually would like to see, because these uh, environmental proposals, the distribution actually is, is extremely strange, right? So in, in very, very high proportion here, they, uh, these proposals are rejected, right? So, uh, for example, in, in comparison to governance proposals, which looks like so-called normal, yes, so-called so normal distribution. So, in this proposal, we have this very tiny fraction of proposals, which actually uh, could be considered as contested. Okay. For example, here. Uh, I 78 and 15, it's, all, it's only maximum, right? 93 proposals. And if you take this range from 40 to, uh, from, from 40, 60 to 45, 55, that's all. From 45 to 55, it's number even less, right? So it would be nice to distribute these uh, funds, uh, these outcomes into categories. Uh, another point of possible selection, you actually address this, uh, you address this in, the, uh, uh, in the presentation. So we know, so these proposals are not management neutral, right? So uh, almost always they are opposed by management. So we observe only this part of the uh, equation, right? But this, we have this unobservable part, so it would be nice to see the same figure, these four groups, also for the um, governance proposals. It would be nice to see like a straight line <laughs> here, okay? Um, another suggestion is a different, maybe a, why the window for a, a relevant window for the contested proposals, you take from 40 to 60, 45 to 60 to 55, I would suggest a, from 30 to 60, okay? To take this actually part as not relevant, right? It's actually part of counting on my vote, not counting. From 0 to 30 and this part. And this part I think is relevant because ex ante, fans really don't know. 
it would be a contested proposal or no. So they probably would prefer to take some margin. Okay, so I think, it, and think if, if I see these domain results here, it probably will improve, even improve, the tables and statistically significant. So my minor, okay, I'll skip this. No minor. No minor. Okay. No so I, I stand here between you and the lunch. So should, uh, would my would my is fun save the planet after this paper? The answer is yes, definitely, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Paris response after those um, kind of, uh, how do you call it, contested or uh, contested uh, proposals? Why do I ask? Okay? Because you might find that uh, some of the contested proposals, the stock market was uh, kind of uh, fond of the ES proposal being rejected. So for those proposals that the stock market was uh, kind of positive about them being rejected, okay, might be, it, it could be that those ES funds voted were in conflict. They didn't want to reduce value, and so you can claim they voted correctly. But what will happen for those ES funds, eh, for those proposals, that the rejection eh, eh, resulted in a negative stock response, okay? This is, this is kind of the, the best sample for you, okay? It could, be, it could be a good decision. It was rejected just because of those um, ES funds that didn't, uh, didn't fulfill their promise, okay? Continue. We are postponing lunch because this is a very interesting paper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting paper, it's an interesting project. Uh, following up on Jamie's comment, these are all, I take it, precatory proposals, not mandatory proposals. So it's not obvious that the 50% mark makes any difference, makes the key difference. They're not binding in any of them. We know from the uh, say on pay proposals that 30% vote against management is perceived by management as a very bad thing. So it could well be, uh, and in part it's because it's a proxy not just for what they think about the compensation structure, but for whether shareholders are happy or dissatisfied with management. So to distinguish between 45 to 55% is like contested proposals, and to say that a 30% vote against management is an uncontested proposal strikes me as entirely arbitrary. And I would think that at the very least, you have any suggestion that you take the 30 to 70 percent as the contested rate has a lot to it. But why, I understand your argument about uh, why not 45 but 30 or 25. Why would it also extend the range in the other direction? Because your argument is saying if you have 30% voting against uh, men... I'm not sure I would. I, I think there's almost nothing about 60% anyway. Okay. So I think taking it down to 30% would give you a lot more information. And also I think after 60%, also they, 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 I mean, they don't only have stop of the new rules or something. Mechanically. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Get, you get management support for the given in some situation. I think it's an extremely interesting project, and I like it very much. Um, I should say, my question is A, um, the size of those non ES funds, I mean, are they big? Gosh, can they influence the vote? I mean, that's strategically the question whether it matters in reality. I mean, does the ESG funds of BlackRock or the other, like the big asset managers, act strategically as well? I mean, get a little bit more information on them. The other, the other question I had is um, maybe what we see here, and it's in line with the explanation you provided, is that management understands that there are going to be probably certain proposals 
So they, they act in a way that pleases those investors. So they engage in a negotiation and say, we'll provide some more information, we'll do X, Y, and Z. And that's why, I mean, it's just a slightly different story. I mean, they still change their voting behavior, but here there might be a justification behind the scene. You, know, you have a relatively limited sample of proposal in that, yes, so you can dig deeper and see what's going on. Maybe they, they uh, uh, you know, come forward and say, we we'll do this and that, and they will persuade them to vote, to change their voting behavior. And I think it's it. I mean, you control the type of the proposals, which I think it's good to see the uh, uh, difference. So I, I, I guess it's, it will be interesting to see if we see this change in what if ever a specific type of proposal. So for instance, low, uh, disclosure of political spending. Do we see it there? Do we see it, I mean, what type of proposal do we see this type of changing there? There's something you have into that, and uh, uh, it will be interesting to know. Thank you. Okay, uh, do you care to respond? Yes, uh, about the, the advisory versus mandatory, you are absolutely right. But there are, all the, there are also papers showing that uh, when, she, when directors do not implement the proposal that passed, they have consequences, right? Immediately, for instance, ISS will recommend voting against the director. In general, the governance, um, well, the one in charge of the governance uh, in, the, in the next meeting. Uh, so they have a pressure to implement the proposal that passed, and that is why we think that the 50% matters. It could be that a proposal that passes is not implemented, and a proposal that didn't pass is implemented, but there is a discontinuity in the other 50%. But for sure, we can try the different intervals and take that into account. Um, about the market reaction, at uh, um, uh, Benny's point, I think it's interesting, but I am not sure how to address that, because if a fund is ES and the market reaction is negative, do they have to favor returns over ES, if they are ES funds? So it is kind of tricky, right, how you address that. What comes first? You had the answer to your left, so to your right. <laughs> okay. um, now, the size of the ES funds, yeah, they are small. They cannot be pivotal individually. But because there is uncertainty about the outcome, they, they have incentives, I think, to behave, even if they are actually not. Um, about the engagement. I went very quickly through the slides, but if you look at the governance proposal, we don't observe the same. And you can say that they have incentives to engage in governance also if a governance proposal is likely to pass. So why don't we observe that? So I think that result is a bit inconsistent with the, with the engagement story. Um, but it could be that companies approach families and try to convince that the funds that will vote against come, uh, vote in favor, right? Which is a skill. It may be a different way of putting our story, but it is consistent with voting together with the family. And about the type of proposal, so we separate environmental and social. Social proposals are only, mostly about political contribution, so our result hold both for environmental, social, political contributions individually, all social proposals without political contribution. So it seems to be like all over the place. Yeah. I think those were the main uh, comments. And about the discussion, uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, um, let me go back, sorry. If we, yes, uh, so funds can change from yes, from, uh, from yes to non-yes. In our uh, classification by ISS, when the fund changes the, the name, it is a different fund completely. So we can potentially look at that, but in our case, we consider them as being uh, completely different. In any case, there is another paper looking at fund uh, changes in fund names, on yes fund names. And they find that they slightly change the voting outcome. Now, whether they engage in strategic voting, I don't know. Uh, probably we, we can look at that. And the other about the contested, I think it's related to. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are all going to walk to lunch now.